what's up, my hunky homies? Today we're going to be talking about uh, functions in Lua. So continuing our conversation about Lua and uh, more specifically uh, reviewing functions, kind of trying to bring it all back together and tie in those loose ends. Let's get started. Okay, so we are picking up from uh, uh, where we were in VS Code. If you don't have it open, open up VS Code. You're going to want to follow along. And instead of continuing to work on our original document, I want us to create a new document. We do that by right-clicking in our workspace folder. Make sure you've got your folder selected. Right-click uh, within that. I don't know. No. You have to click in kind of a blank area. So make sure you do that. Uh, and then we're going to click New File and give it a name. I've already done that. I've called it test dot, uh, test2.lua. And so I'm going to go into there. And we are going to review functions. First thing that I want you to do, okay, I want you to do this pretty much any time. If I give you a task on, on, a, on a script, I want you to think through the steps of that task, okay? I want you to set out a framework which will help guide you. It's easy to get lost in, in all this information in the code. It's easy to get lost. So set out a framework. How do we do that? We do that by placing comments. These are, these are bits of, of text that the computer does not read, but we read. And it helps us make sense of what we are doing. So let's think about this problem we have. I want to overview functions. I want to basically create a function that accepts information and then spits it back out. So if you recall from our previous lessons, you have to first, um, you have to define the function before you can actually call the function. Think about it like this. Let's say that you, somebody asks you to talk to J Joe Smith and you don't know who Joe Smith is. Well, then, of course, you'd say, no, wait, you need to first define who is Joe Smith and then I can go talk to him. So hopefully that helps. So that's, that's the way that Lua works is you have to define your function before you actually call it. And that, that really does, it makes sense. So what we're going to do here is we're going to write out define function. Now, underneath that, after we have defined the function, I want to actually call the function. Now, this is a very simple script that we're writing. And these comments are very um, minimal, which is fine which is fine. I want you to practice this method. It helps, again, like I said, it helps guide your thought process, keeps you keeping you on track. This is the first layer in understanding and communicating with the computer, okay? So it, this helps our minds engage and understand what the script is doing. Okay, defining a function. It can be done in several different ways. I'm gonna show you a second way today, but before we do that, let's cover what we have in the past. The way that we, the syntax for defining a function is simply writing a function and then followed by the parentheses. And what I'm going to do is I, and I'd encourage it, I encourage this, use the autocomplete that VS Code gives you. Uh, auto, autocomplete can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, but um, to, as much as you can, use it. All right, so here we have function. And it's added our parentheses, and it's added an end. That's really good. You don't have to worry about forgetting the end. All right, so uh, now look at where it has put the cursor. Why has it put the cursor there? Well, the reason why is because our function still needs a name. It, it, why do we all have names? So that people know how to address us and talk to specifically you or I. So this function needs a name, and we're going to give it the name func. Uh, it stands for function. It's a short, short for function, right? And that is completely defined. It's completely defined. It's very useless as is. 
but it is, it's, it's completely defined. Uh, now what I wanna do is I wanna pass information into my uh, function that I've created. Uh, so I have the standard, I have the box now, and now I need to put something, uh, or I need to create some sort of input into our box. Let's do that. Okay, so there are uh, two main ways that we, def that we do this information transfer, how we pass information in. And the first step is to catch the info. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna send info, right? So that's obvious that we're gonna send it. But how do we catch the information? Well, here is our function definition. So it, it stands to reason that we would be catching it somewhere in, in our function definition. And if you remember from previous classes, it, that is done inside of these parentheses. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some boxes var and var one, let's say, and var two. Okay, so here are two boxes ready to accept information. These variables then can be used within the context of our function inside of our box. We can do whatever we want with those variables. But uh, before I do something with those variables, before I define that, let's go down here and I'm going to actually uh, send the information. All right, so well, you know what? Let's scratch. Let's scratch this one out. So catch information. Got it. Now what we need to do is we need to um, uh, send the information. So before we can send the information, we got to remember how do we actually uh, call a function? Well, we do that by simply writing out the name. It's like calling somebody's name. <clears throat> and cool thing here to note is that you'll you'll see here. Um, I guess I can't do it that way. Uh, the function it gives you some handy suggestions. So it says this function has two variables, and they can be uh, var one can be any type of variable. Var two can be any type of variable. There are ways, if I'm not mistaken, to define so that those helpful those those helpful tips are actually more helpful. In this case, it's great. I mean, it, get, it tells you what you can input, your what your function is asking for, or what boxes are available to fill. So we're just going to keep it simple, and I'm going to do both uh, a two and a three, and then and and that is uh, that is our last uh, line item for sending information, uh, uh, which is to send it. Okay, so let's take a second and look look at this and review review what I just covered. All right, so we've got a function call here and two uh, numbers. Well, this these numbers are gonna make their way up to the function, but where are they gonna go? Well, they're gonna go to their respective slot. So two is gonna come up here and it's gonna get dumped into var one. It's going Var one is gonna become two. It's gonna hold the value of two. So three here is gonna work its way up to the function and become or be placed inside of the box var2, which then we can do something with var2. Well, what are we gonna do with var2? Let's decide, and I think I'll just keep it really simple. Uh, let's go get into our function here, and we'll write var2, or no, sorry, let's create a new variable, var3, and set it equal to var1, um, let's just do plus var2. So um, we have now used the input that we passed to our function. We've used it to create a new variable var3, and we can do all kinds of other stuff. And, and these functions, that's the usefulness of these functions, is that there's so much you can do. So now we have defined var3, and let's uh, give it back. Let's return it. So with the way we do that is by typing return. I'm gonna press tab to autocomplete that because it, it was on that option. And use some using some parentheses to just ensure that what is being passed is the, the parentheses, within the parentheses. I'm gonna pass back var3. Great, so we've now returned 
var three. In this case, it's going to be five, right? So two plus three is five. We can expect that. Um, and so, but this returned information, where in the world does it go? Where, where does it go, right? Well, it goes down here somewhere. We know that we called the function here. And so we should expect somewhere right around here that information to show up. Well, the way that Lua works anyways, is that the selected text becomes in effect, it becomes the returned value. And if you think about that, let's say that you wrote a five right here in the middle of your script, right? Cause this is going to return five. So let's say you wrote just five on line 10, five. The interpreter has no idea. And you can see the, the VS code is, has given it a red line. Uh, the interpreter has no idea what you want to do with that five, no idea. But we know there's several different things that we can do with information. We can print it to the screen. We could assign it to a variable and uh, uh, whatnot, right? So what I want to do is I want to just print. I just want to go straight to printing this information to the screen. And the shortest, most efficient way of doing that is simply writing print and then be sure, don't forget your parentheses, uh, or yeah, your parentheses, you are gonna throw the function with its inputs into print. And that right there is uh, everything, that is the overview of functions. We've defined a function, we've accepted an input, we've uh, returned information from our function. Now, let's go ahead and uh, save that and run it. So I'm gonna go down here to the terminal, I'm gonna do up arrow, up arrow, hit clear, up arrow, Lua test two, and it says five. Okay, last thing before I let you go, I want to introduce you to one other way that is very, very popular for defining a function. This actually might make more sense to you, okay? Um, this is the Lua defined way. It's just like kind of de facto. It's how you define, but there are other legitimate ways of doing this. Now, remember for a variable to define a variable, it was var equals five, let's say. So var equals five. Great. You've defined a variable. It has a value of five and the interpreter knows how to uh, create that variable. And in this case, it's an integer. So it just, it just knows v var is of type integer. Well, you can actually, believe it or not, you can do the same thing with function. What do I mean? Well, you can write function or func, give it a name equals, and then, uh, and then function get rid of that get rid of that name because at this point you've already named it and then followed by parentheses and then the variables that you're going the the the, the placeholders right so so that is the other way it's a little change a little change and and um now you have a properly a still properly defined function lua function um, and it just looks a little bit different. And actually this kind of makes a little more sense when the interpreter comes through this script, it sees func and it says, Oh, okay. We've got a variable. Remember functions are variable types. So we've got a variable and what is this variable? What does it comprise of? Well, in this case, it's, it's a function. And so you simply, uh, uh, and so, and, and as you can see, it's equals function. So what happens if we say func? Well, it, uh, okay, there it is. So y you can go down to the, the option there and it, it, it says function. It, it has correctly identified function. And we can of course save this and run it and there's no change whatsoever in our script. So there it is, Lua 5. So uh, anyway, so that is the other way that I need you to know how to define a function. And this is very, very important. Why? Because mind test, this is how mind test uh, typically 
defines a function. So guys, I'm sorry about this being a little bit longer than usual, but uh, uh, I hope that helps kind of tie up some loose ends with functions. Um, we're gonna continue to review them, but like I said, functions are extremely valuable, extremely important. So please pay attention, get this locked in that brain of yours, and um, uh, uh, we'll, we'll keep moving forward. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you next time.